I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The vision of Doral Academy Charter Middle High School is to set the standard for outstanding student achievement while providing a safe and nurturing academic environment. Good morning, Firebirds. My name is Gabriela Sarero. Today is February 25th, and you're watching Firebird TV Middle School. at around 11.15 a.m. yesterday. Police say they don't know whether the shooting was self-inflicted or not, but the information that came through the computer-aided dispatch was that the teen accidentally shot himself in the head. On to national news. One of Texas's biggest power provider, ERCOT, is being sued for $100 million by a family who suffered the loss of an 11-year-old boy due to hypothermia. The family stayed in a mobile home where the boy slept with his brother one night and did not wake up in the morning. The family deems the company responsible for the loss of power, so they are taking this to court. Now let's test your trivia knowledge on what went on today in history. Good morning, Firebirds. I'm Kiara Lecrica here with your TikTok Thursday. This new trend going around on TikTok using one of Michael Jackson's popular songs, Bad. At the start, people begin to dance. Until the song hits the lyric bad, people freeze the image, striking one of Michael Jackson's famous poses on their toes in the filter black and white. Another trend going around on TikTok is that apparently men have different centers of gravity than women. <laughs> in this video, this woman can hold herself up in this position. Although, as soon as this man tries it, he falls to the floor. Signing off from Firebird TV, I'm Chiara Legrica. Now, here's a Black History Month video presented to you by our very own NHHS. Emmett Till was born to working parents in southern Chicago. When he was barely 14 years old, he was brutally murdered after allegedly flirting with a white woman. Despite there being no real evidence nor crime committed, this allegation was enough for his bloodthirsty killers to leave him beaten and dead at the young age of 14. His life was ripped away in a heartbeat, a final heartbeat that sparked the commencement of the civil rights movement in 1955. Only one month later, America would find that its brutal grasp over an entire race of people would finally be questioned. In Montgomery, Alabama, Claudette Colvin realized she simply could no longer stand for the pointless racism that plagued the nation when she refused to give up her seat to a white woman on a segregated bus. So uh, another thing, we was, had to get up and give white people to see just to, not an elderly woman or an elderly man, just to show that they were superior than, uh, and we was inferior. As the handcuffs were wrapped around her wrist, she proudly walked out the bus, not knowing she would be the first to truly challenge the law. So that day I said, uh, when the bus people asked me, say, why didn't you get up? When the bus driver asked you to get up, 
I say, you know what? History had me glued to the seat. <laughs> it was in December of the same year that Rosa Parks proceeded to do the very same thing, which would ultimately prompt the year-long Montgomery bus boycott. Bus after bus, African Americans refused to give up their seats until their large-scale demonstrations reached the steps of the Supreme Court, which finally enforced the integration of the bus system. Throughout America, African Americans rejoiced and realized that with enough work and enough numbers, they had the ability to break away from the chains of hate that continued to pull them down. From this victory emerged hundreds of nonviolent protests and demonstrations that shook the very foundations of American society. From Martin Luther King to Malcolm X, what once were simple pastors and average members of society would soon become staples of the civil rights movement. It was on January 11, 1957, when 60 pastors and civil rights leaders met together in Georgia to form a nonviolent unified front against racial discrimination. Among these 60 pastors stood Martin Luther King, perhaps one of the largest known names in the civil rights movement due to his limitless amount of determination for peace and equity. Through the use of nonviolent protests, similar to that of Gandhi, the civil rights movement was able to gain traction across the country. A group of four African-American college students, now known as the Greensboro Four, proved that through large-scale nonviolence, they could make themselves heard. By being the first four to sit in at a whites-only counter, they were able to spark a mass sit-in movement not only within their city, but through multiple states. It is essential that we do not forget the immense amount of physical abuse and attack that protesters across the country would have to face. Countless human beings simply looking for the same access to sit on the same side of the bus, be able to go to the same school, be treated like human beings, would return home bruised and beaten, but never broken. The bruises on their skin would serve as a foundation in which the current protests are fueled and the spark that continues to inspire future generations to take action. Racism is a poison that continues to plague the nation. But with the right amount of people and the right amount of sacrifice, these events have proven that we as a society can end up on the right side of history. It is not only important, but essential that we take time to look back at our past and recognize the ordeals that African Americans have faced in order to be able to educate ourselves and build a future that accepts all of us. Now on to your sports announcements. The boys soccer team play their state semifinals game tomorrow at home at 7 p.m. There's a track meet at Southridge High School tomorrow. Softball plays against American Heritage tomorrow at 6 p.m. Softball played yesterday against Archbishop McCarthy and won with a score of 13 to 2. Key Club will be holding tutoring sessions for middle school every Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. To sign up, make sure to contact Ms. Suarez. Tomorrow is the last day to turn in your physicals to try out for the boys' middle school soccer team. There will be an ethics bowl meeting on Friday at 3 p.m. Yearbook pictures are March 1st through the 4th. Make sure to sign up. That's all for today, Firebirds. Make sure to follow us on other social medias at Firebird TV to keep up with our latest updates. Signing off from Firebird TV, I'm Gabriela Sarero, and I hope you have a terrific Thursday.